What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch with SC Weather. Hope you all been having a great Monday. Uh, we're going to break down the potential for a significant storm system as we get into the latter part of the week, into this weekend. Potential for a classic major March snowstorm for areas like Denver, just the whole entire state of Colorado. Uh, potential areas outside of Colorado also. And also, we're going to break down the potential severe weather uh, part of this event that could unfold in places like Oklahoma, Texas, uh, parts of the Mid-South, even parts of the Western Deep South. So we're going to break all that down, get into details, because this really looks like a major winter storm, uh, maybe one to two feet somewhere along the front range. So we're going to break all that down. So if you guys have not hit the subscribe button, if you're a new viewer from out there in the West, uh, in the Midwest and just the Colorado area, we'd love for you guys for the subscribe, consider liking the video. Um, I talk weather here in the Eastern U.S., but I'll also break down major weather events throughout the country. So definitely hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. The growth is awesome. And y'all give me a platform to express my something that I love, which is the weather. So thank y'all for that. So Let's get going with this. We're going to take a look at really what is pumping out this major event. It's really just this cutoff low here. We're going to look at the latest GFS. So this is you got a big time ridge uh, that's pretty much flexing its guns here. That's going to be doing that. It's going to be warming up the southeast, the mid Atlantic. So we're going to be having much above average temperatures. It's going to put a lot of areas really spring fever, and it's just going to feel awesome. But check it out. You got this upper level low, this cutoff low, whatever you want to call it. It's an upper level low. Um, it gets kind of cut off in the mainstream. It brings its own cold air. Well, what happens here is um, <clears throat> it brings its own cold air. It brings its own moisture, and not really its own moisture, but you have ample amount of moisture as you have an active jet really going through this area. So you have to have a you have a, hot, a heavy amount of precipitation, and you have cold air. And this is not going to look. This really doesn't look like it's going to be that event where you get say heavy snow and temps in the teens in Denver. It's not going to be that kind of event. This is going to be that heavy wet snow for Denver, but this is this is the thing right here. This is the element that's going to pump out severe weather down here potentially and a major winter storm up here. So we're going to break it all down. So as we're getting going, let's just show y'all what everybody wants to see and that's the snowfall accumulation. So I'm going to show y'all these are just operational runs. These are not something that when you look at it it's going to happen. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm going to show you the European. I'm going to show you the GFS. So check it out here. <clears throat> this is the GFS all the way from a week from the day. So next Monday. So <clears throat> I think it accounts for a couple systems. One, obviously, the major system, what we're talking about. But if you look here, uh, this is one to two foot of snow across the front range. This is over a foot of snow, even in the plains of Colorado, the flat areas of Colorado. And even heavy snow, even as you get into western areas of Kansas, Nebraska, and even areas of maybe the panhandle of Oklahoma and Texas. So we have to watch out for those areas. This is the cold side of the storm. Um, we're going to look at the GFS, but we're going to be a little bit closer to Colorado here as we get going. The GFS is ridiculous, guys. So when you look at this, there's not going to be 49 inches of snow south of Denver or 40 in the 40s. It's not going to be like that. But it's just it's very interesting how juiced up this storm is as far as snowfall for the front range here. I would not be surprised if Denver picks up anywhere from 12 to 20 inches of snow from this. Wouldn't be surprised at all. It's going to be an impressive event for you guys. And this is not unheard of for this area. I mentioned before that uh, March is actually the snowiest, I believe the snowiest month of the year for areas of the front range out here. Uh, April can be even snowier. April can be snowier than January for this area. It's not unheard of. The change of the seasons is absolutely wild out here. People, I live in South Carolina. People out here like to say that the, the weather changes dramatically. But then I tell them all the time, if you guys live out in the Midwest, that um, it has nothing compared to what you guys see out there. So it's incredible, the, the dynamics of the storm here. But let's look at the European we're going to run through the run here, and uh, this you get into the storm, you get later in the week, you get into Thursday into Friday, and here's a storm right here. It gets cranking, you got heavy snow almost the entire state of Colorado, you got heavy snow breaking out in western um, Kansas and areas of what far, far western areas of uh, Panhandle, Oklahoma, and Texas. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think the, the European is a little bit more colder than the GFS as far as how far west um, I'm sorry, I keep saying west. It's, yeah, how far east the snow gets to the western areas of these states like Kansas, 
Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Texas. So that storm, this is this is that's heavy snow, guys. That's pretty heavy snow. I know that's hard to see on the screen, probably, but uh, this is the severe weather part of it. Um, we're going to talk about this towards the tail end of the video. So if you guys here that really want to hear about that, we're going to break this down because this has a chance to maybe. Um, calls uh, nasty weather for areas of the western mid-south and the deep south so we're going to see what this can do i think a big element in this severe weather event is really going to be dew points how moist can you get the air i think that's going to be a big element here but this is the gfs and we're going to run through this too because the gfs is super interesting with how heavy it has this snow right here in colorado um, this is super heavy snow in colorado um, I mean, holy cow, That it is just puking snow. You look at the soundings, maybe just south of Boulder here. It's probably going to show something ridiculous. It's 33 degrees. That's a snow sounding. Um, the DGZs are ridiculous. That means you got heavy precipitation. Uh, it is going to be snowing very heavy. This is going to be an intense storm. It's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds over the next few days and how if it can maintain this really snowy look. But those are some very heavy returns. I mean, you look right here goes all the way up from 0.1 to 14 in a range of how heavy it's showing, and that's all the way into the 10s, the 12s of uh, tropical tidbits here. But the storm gets going. This looks like a, a decently long duration event. And then, you, you know, this is this is what – this is – GFS and European are not short-range models. So you look at this, and you're thinking, oh, just some yellow, some heavy rain. But it doesn't really depict severe weather. That's why until we get into short-range modeling, we're not going to really know – the severe weather aspect of this so and I'm going to talk about what we do know about this though here later in the video but um, you know this looks like a big time event so you get a little bit closer here and I want to show you how heavy this snow looks as we get into time this really gets cranking Saturday morning into Saturday but that is some heavy heavy snow for Colorado guys and it's borderline it's, it's a little bit warmer for areas in like western Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, uh, European has snow all the way back over here, but it's going to be interesting to see what really happens here. This is a big time, heavy, high precipitation event, a classic, very heavy event, and we're going to run through this really quick, but this is the snow breaking out, a heavy band of snow right here. This could, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody hears thunder snow out in this area. This is just could be a really, really heavy precipitation event, so heavy heavy wet snow. Like I said, a lot of times Denver can get these crazy Arctic fronts that slide down the front range and drop you from 70 to 80 degrees to, and then it's snowing in the teens the next day. This isn't going to quite be like that. It's going to be a dramatic drop, but this is going to be more of snow falling in the 30s and 20s as opposed to snow falling in the teens and single digits like sometimes y'all see. So this is the European, the operational run, which is the more responsible thing to show here. Um, this is an average. This is a mean, guys. So the mean here is crazy. It's over a foot of snow for Denver, the entire front range, the entire um, eastern half of Colorado. The mean, the mean, which is an average, is over a foot this far out, several days out. That is an impressive signal for snow for them guys right there. And it's even impressive as you get deeper. And look, you get deeper into the run, you get about 10 days out, and it's even crazier. So... Um, I want to show you this because this is mind-blowing here. I've never seen this impressive of basically a Samba Runs. This is basically 50 runs combined together to create a mean. So this is the EPS of Samba Runs for Denver. So check it out. All the way through the 17th, you have a mean of 15, 16, 17 inches. And every, every run right here, you've got a big-time run. I mean, it's crazy. You look at the same thing for Boulder. It's almost the exact same thing. Extremely impressive signal this far out. We're not super far out. The weekend's are right around the corner, technically speaking. But uh, this is very impressive. This looks like a high-end event for you guys in Denver and just the entire front range. But let's look at the sev severe. Well, let's take a look at this too. So this is this is the chances of a quarter inch of liquid uh, liquid equivalent of snow and sleet. So. You look at here, um, that's a solid signal this far out. This is day five, and it's already showing chances of 50 to 70% chance of over a quarter inch of liquid equivalent to snow and sleet. You look at day seven, day six, same thing. That's an impressive signal. You can't really get away from that look. Now we're going to look at the severe weather threat. So we're still not inside day four or day three. So 
it just does kind of severe weather outlook. So a 15% chance of severe weather is possible in Oklahoma City all the way into northern areas of North Texas, Tulsa. Um, there's a lot of dynamics with this that's really we need to figure out. We don't know. There's a lot of question marks still. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a severe weather outbreak, but I know a lot of um, storm chasers are really interested in what this is going to do. So this is for what days? This is for Friday. So if you read down the discussion, basically in a nutshell, it says that basically all severe threat hazards are on the table or possible. So what the main threat is going to be, we still don't know yet. But I think a big element of this is we need a lot of, we need some moisture. We need dew points to be decently high in this. And uh, just your standard, what kind of cape is it going to be? Remember, you can substitute certain things for others, like what kind of sheer cape, um, what kind of moisture input are you going to have in this? You can substitute certain things for certain things, and it really kind of promotes that a specific threat, a high wind threat, a tornado threat. What are you lowering and what are you, you know, you know, making higher? So what is the main threat going to be? Not sure, but you go to day six and day seven. <clears throat> day six, it extends. And it starts moving a little bit east. So this is what I'm talking about. You know, how far east is this going to move? Is this going to start to get into Mississippi, Alabama? But this is uh, getting into Monday, Sunday into Monday. So this is pretty far out. We just don't know this. And the last thing I'll show you is that moisture. Um, Friday, check out the dew points. You got a tail of two air masses. You really need dew points. You don't have to have them, um, depending on the event. But you really need dew points in the 60s. And when you get them in the 70s, that 70s is when you're starting to get into really a tornadic atmosphere. You don't have to have it because there's other elements that compensate for that. But you get into Friday, getting into Saturday, you look at this area right here. You got dew points around upper 50s into the 60s. So, um, what kind of event are you going to have? And then you got a front that basically slides east and kills any severe weather threat. You're not going to get severe weather threat in the dew points in the 30s and the 20s. So, um, how amplified is this moisture going to be? How far north does it get? What kind of setup you have? It's going to be interesting, but you guys on the front range, we're going to keep looking, looking out for you guys because this looks like a major event for y'all. So thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a great night.